So um, I've had a, a number of folks uh, ask me about replacing the seals in a Japanese eyedropper ink stop pen. And, uh, you know, the, the old uh, pens uh, from the 1940s, 50s, uh, I think even into the 1960s, um, they come with this, uh, this uh, mechanism that's very much like um, an Onoto, but without the, uh, the ability to actually, uh, you know, the, the vacuum piece where you can uh, suck in ink with it. And so basically these are just eyedropper pens, but with a, an ink stop or a sealer that uh, seals the, uh, the, uh, the pen so that it doesn't leak and uh, actually makes it great for taking on trips on the airplane and so on because you can take them uh, and they will not leak. Also, um, uh, they will hold uh, just a lot of ink and they're great. Uh, they're great pens. I love them. Uh, my own, I've actually shifted completely to Japanese eyedroppers uh, in the last uh, two or three years and I love them. So, um, so the way to actually open these up and, and uh, exchange the, uh, the old cork, which by the way, almost always leaks nowadays. Uh, rarely you find one that actually doesn't, but uh, I replace the old corks with, uh, with uh, O-rings uh, that work great. And so the first step, uh, which is really the key to getting the whole thing apart, is that this end piece, blind cap, whatever you want to call it, is actually um, reverse threaded. So you actually have to turn it, uh, you know, clockwise to get it off. Now, um, sometimes they're a little bit difficult to do. Uh, I had actually taken that apart uh, earlier. Uh, I'll go get a, a tool, uh, which is good because then, then I can show you that uh, there's another, uh, actually a, a step of uh, to, to take that apart. So uh, what I use is I use a, uh, a rubber uh, hose that I've cut and uh, wrap it around the, uh, the shaft. And then I use uh, my vice grips. And I've done this many times, so I got, I've got the right uh, the grip. Uh, you can actually go too far and, and you can, uh, obviously you could, you could harm the, uh, the shaft. But then uh, it just, uh, unscrews uh, like so. Now, if you've got an old pen that's been used, um, it would be important to actually may, uh, maybe uh, soak that for a day or two. And the way that I do that is I actually put my water into the blind cap itself, um, close it up, and then allow, uh, allow it to soak for a day or two. And I'll go back in and, uh, you know, the, the water will, in fact, uh, you know, evaporate. And so I'll go back a little bit later and uh, re- uh, you know, test it, see if I can get it apart easily. And then uh, if not, then I just let it soak a little bit longer. Uh, it's uh, great to be really patient with these. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can uh, destroy the, uh, the shaft on that and that's difficult to replace. It's one of the reasons I don't, uh, people have asked me to repair their pens for them. I don't like to do that because there is danger involved in that. And uh, anytime you're working with an old pen, uh, it's easy to destroy it. So then you remove the, uh, the shaft the ink stop shaft comes through like that. Uh, and you can see this pen has never had ink in it. It's uh, new old stock, so it's gonna be easy to work with. Uh, and then you have a little um, retainer washer threaded that uh, holds the old uh, uh, cork in. Now, uh, again, uh, oftentimes these will not come easily. And so the, the key again is just, it's. Uh, is to soak it uh, as I showed you with the other one. And uh, it will come eventually, but the, the thing that will actually uh, cause the used ones not to come easily is the fact that they've got dried ink in there. So if you uh, will just soak it for a day or two, they will come apart usually uh, with a little bit of, uh, of effort. So this one should come apart. The other, I've done five others and they all came apart easily. And uh, it does. So that's what that retainer looks like, just a little threaded retainer. And what I've used is just a flathead screwdriver that fits into the hole. I've done it enough times, I know uh, the right size. Um, and I try not to, of course, destroy that because uh, if you destroy that uh, little retainer, you'll have problems uh, replacing it. Now, the interesting thing is that most of these are the same size. So if you have a, an old pen, uh, you can actually utilize some of these, uh, you know, something from other parts that uh, 
that you use. Now that uh, the old cork just came right out. Uh, it, uh, of course, uh, like most corks, uh, it had shrunk over the years uh, with time and uh, it's just a little bit difficult. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to run a, a little brush through there. And of course I didn't bring it, so I'll go get it real quickly. And I've, uh, again, I've done this a lot of times. I've done a couple hundred of these. Uh, and uh, enjoy doing that. All right, now, so um, I use a uh, a knitting uh, needle to uh, place my O-rings, and I've got I've got these off of uh, off of Amazon, and uh, they're six millimeter outside diameter O-rings. I actually use two. Uh, I've heard of people using just one. I like to use two because there is actually. Uh, a little bit of a, a large void there. Um, and I use a little bit of silicone grease, not too much because you can, in fact, have too much silicone grease. And it'll uh, interfere with the, uh, uh, with the ink. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll cause problems if you have too much. So I just seat that. Uh, seat the second one. Those went well. And then uh, take the uh, the threaded uh, retainer and uh, screw it back in. So you can see that that uh, is all seated now. I look I like to look through it and make sure that uh, there's a straight shot for the old uh, ink stop rod. And what I do with the ink stop rod is I always put just a little bit of silicone grease on it. And then I feed it back in. Got to get into a little hole inside there. There we go. And I like to uh, rotate it. Uh, you know, it's threaded, so uh, it will work with that. Now, um, some, you know, it's sort of difficult to get through the O-rings, so I use my trusty thick uh, tool here and rotate it with a little bit of pressure. Going through. Do it again. I, uh, it went through and then I pull it back out again. <laughs> Patience uh, is, of course, uh, essential when working with old pens. Uh, with my tool, if I actually pushed it in too far, uh, you can destroy the barrel. The barrel is just uh, black hard rubber, um, ebonite. And uh, if you go too far, you can, in fact, destroy it. And you don't want to do that. You can see it's, uh, it's gone through now. And then what you do is uh, just go ahead and uh, thread the line cap back on. Now this next step is essential if it's going to, to be an effective ink stop. And that is um, you're going to thread that, but you want um, the ink stop to actually be flush up against the hole in the uh, section. So, um, so I uh, screw it on. You can see that uh, the ink stop now is, is too long. So I simply you know, screw it on some more. Still too long. So I gradually move it to the point where um, it's flush. That probably will be still a little bit too far. You can see it's still too far. There's still a little gap there. 
Once again, patience is key in uh, getting it uh, situated correctly. Now, I used to actually put a little bit of uh, sealant in the hole. Uh, I don't do that anymore. Uh, talk to some other fountain pin folks, and they just leave it. Uh, because it is reverse threaded, it's not going to uh, turn off. You see, it's still a little bit too, too far. And it probably will still not be quite there, but I like to go slowly with that with that step. See, it's still just a little bit, there's still a little bit of gap there. It's tight against here. It would actually seal uh, against leakage, but I don't like that gap. So I'm going to take it just a little bit further, another maybe half turn. And that probably will not be quite right, not quite there yet either. See, uh, still a, a very, very small gap. I'm going to go just a little bit more. That was maybe a quarter turn. That should be just about right. Yep, still not quite. And that's about there. Uh, I may go even another uh, half turn. That would actually work. Uh, it's very, very close. Uh, and then the next step with this would be, uh, notice that I have the, uh, the feed and the, the nib out. And what a lot of times I do is I'll actually go back and fill this with water. And just to ensure that uh, it doesn't leak, go ahead and put some water in, tighten it down, and then close it, and then you know, just shake it and see if, in fact, it is sealed against leakage. Uh, it's a very effective uh, way to re replace these, uh, repair these, and, and uh, you know, great pens. Um, I hope this helps uh, in terms of uh, if you'd like to, uh, you know, repair your own eyedropper pens. If you'd like uh, the uh, exact dimensions of the O-rings that I use, uh, that I get on uh, uh, Amazon.com, uh, email me at danix, D-A-Y-N-I-X, at AOL.com, and I will send you a picture of the uh, O-rings that I buy. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, this is a great pen. Uh, I really like, as I said, the uh, Japanese eyedroppers. And uh, my next step is going to be to complete this by fitting a, a, a brand new nib to it, and it'll be uh, ready to go. Hey, uh, thanks much. Uh, uh, take care.